exclusive home of Dallas Cowboys football. KRLD FM and HD1, Dallas, Fort Worth. Let's go, Cowboys. This, this, this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And the X is going up again. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mahindra Tractors, get the best seven-year warranty in Texas. And by Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Now your hosts, Jeff Cavanaugh and Brad Sham. Well, there will be no Jeff Cavanaugh this Actually, there will be a Jeff Cavanaugh this evening, but he won't be here. Thank you very much. Jeff is, uh, is on a bi-week vacation. So I'm going to try to muddle through, and uh, we are grateful for all of you being with us on this uh, bi-week edition of the Cowboys Hour. As always, uh, the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by our dear friends at Albertsons, and we are here at the Omni Frisco, uh, right on the porch, on the patio of uh, Neighborhood Services. Uh, we are delighted to have all of you with us who have come out tonight to meet our guests, and let's meet them now, the Cowboys defensive backs, Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown. Thank you both for coming out. How you doing? Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank having. you. Uh, thanks to all of you for being with us. Those of you who are here a little later in the program, we're going to try to give you an opportunity if you'd like to ask uh, Kayvon and or A.B. a question. We'll have a, mi a microphone to mix out there. These little boxes, men, are for streaming live right now on DallasCowboys.com, wherever people are with a computer, or later in the week. So... Hi, Jacob. Thanks for putting up the cameras. Uh, we are delighted to have you wherever you're listening on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. This is our regular Monday night stop uh, from 6 to 7. And uh, so let's find out first uh, what do these guys do with a bye week. Now, I know Kayvon Frazier, I'm, I, know, I now know, because Joe Trahan from Cowboys PR told me, uh, you went back to Central Michigan for homecoming, right? Yeah, yeah. It was our homecoming game. We played... Toledo, Ohio. So I went back to visit. And How'd the game it was a go? Good time. How'd the game go? It didn't go too good for us, but <laughs> we still had a good time. It's all that counts. You mean you mean you can enjoy a football game if your team doesn't win as a fan? I mean, I didn't really enjoy the game, but <laughs> I just enjoyed coming back and seeing everybody. And um, you know, they definitely welcomed me back with open with, with open arms. So it was definitely a good time. And, and what did you do? Well, unfortunately, uh, Purdue was on the road, so I wasn't able to go to Purdue. And um, I took my I took my son and my girl. We went to Disney in Orlando. Oh, nice! Yeah, very nice. What what days. what rides did we ride? Just all the kid rides. You know, my son he only one, so he he isn't big enough to even get on a big ride. So I just got on like the teacup spin around and the Dumbo, the elephant ride. You know, little small ride. Here comes a little asparagus for you. You want to try some Appreciate of that? That's good stuff. Uh, does he? Did he even know where he was? No. He's one year old. Don't have no idea. Why didn't you just like sit in the living room and put up pictures of Mickey Mouse and tell him later on? You know, remember that time I took you to Disney World? It really, it wasn't even my idea. It was my girl idea. That's I can't tell what her I no. thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Exactly. Okay. All right. Do you, so, did did you get away from? Now you watched the Chippewas. Yep. But other than that, did you kind of not try to think about football, get away from it a little bit? Yeah, I actually didn't watch any other football besides the Chippewas. So, yeah, it's always good to, you, you know, like refresh your mind from football. And, and did you watch any football? Oh. No, no, you not at Disney World with a one-year-old. Trust me, I still watch it. I mean, I watch it all the time. You, College, you, NFL don't matter. I still watch it. All right, now, uh, Anthony's been on the program before. Kayvon has not, so... Uh, I, I, we love the opportunity to let you guys become real three-dimensional people to all these folks. And, and one of the things that we find out is that all football players are not necessarily football fans. Football fans don't always understand how that works, but you are, A.B. Now, uh, and so you can. Wa we're going to let you watch... A great college game or a great NFL game today, but you can only watch one. Which one are you watching? Well, since I'm in the NFL, of course, the NFL. <laughs> you can still say college if you want. <laughs> I'd say the NFL game, though. And, and when you were a kid, which one did you want to watch? The same. I didn't start really watching college ball until I got in college. Really? All right. And it was more NFL. Now, um, you, now you grew up in Tampa. Yeah. Uh, 
Bucks Buck. fan? Yeah, I was a Bucks fan growing up. You know, um, Coach Marinelli, he, he still pull up those clips. I remember those clips like yesterday. And it's, it's amazing, man. You know, 2002, 2003, made it to the Super Bowl, got to win it. And it was great. Did, it, did that defense schematically remind you of what you play? Yeah, we played the same as that defense. <laughs> That's what was funny. <laughs> 15, 17 years later, it's the same thing. Nothing changed. Uh, so you were ready for it then when you got here? I guess perfect fit. All right. And now what about you? Which do, Are you a football fan, Kayvon? Yeah, I would say I'm a football fan. What do you like to watch? I'd rather watch college. Um, I haven't started watching NFL games until until I started playing in the, in the NFL. And did you have a favorite team growing up? Uh, college. college team? Yeah. yeah, I hate to say it, but I was always a Michigan State fan until they didn't offer me. Then I started liking uh, Central Michigan. Um, why did they not offer you? I don't know. That's a, Well, Central Michigan only offer I had out of high school. So that's interesting. Here you are. By, by the way, the, this is the sixth round draft class for the last year. A and B, both of them drafted in the sixth round. Yep. That's supposed to mean a long shot, but here you both are. And uh, both, th these are two of the reasons that the defensive future of this team is so bright. These guys have everything out in front of them. But, but um, we're going to, well, I'm going to just start with A.B. on this for just a second. Uh -huh. uh, because, you know, Orlando Skandrick has been very well known as having a chip on his shoulder. And uh, A.B. came in last year and, and, I don't know, did Orlando take you under his wing or did you just naturally gravitate to him? Because I mean, you, you say that you have the same thing, right? I said, yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, coming in, you know, Orlando, Brandon, and Morris, all three of them, they was a big, big help to me, you know, um, giving me advice. You know, just trying to learn everything from them and how the NFL works. Brandon and Morris, they left. So Orlando, the last one here. And so that just made our connection even bigger, you know. Just, we like the, really the only two guys from last year in a, in a, as a corner that was playing. So, you know, that break our relationship closer and we just, we just stick like that. But now when we talk about a guy having a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> he was the fifth rounder. I was the sixth rounder. I always felt like I've been overlooked. I took it to another level and got the tattoo on the shoulder. Did so you know that? He's got a tattoo of what on your shoulder? A, a chip, a potato chip. A potato chip. Yeah. He literally has a chip on his shoulder. Something people people think it's crazy, but I feel like it's something different. I feel like it's my idea. I put some I put a little twist to it. And they, in today's world, everybody's doing crazy things. Everybody does something something different. So I don't want to be like everybody else. People say, why you can get a poker chip? Why you get a computer chip, a wood chip? I didn't want that. I got what I wanted because that's what I wanted. So that's the reason I did it. Now, uh, Orlando, and I love Orlando Scandrick. I think he's one of the best corners in the league. He's always, since he's been here 10 years and probably when he was at Boise, he's always motivated himself by thinking he was overlooked, underrated, whatever. Maybe he was before he got here. I don't know. But it works for him. But you, you went to Purdue. You went to a Big Ten school. Do, I mean, do you feel like you were un overlooked or underrated before you got to the NFL? Most definitely. I felt like I didn't get any Florida offers. Uh, all my offers came out the Big Ten or at the MAC. And um, I actually did have a Florida offer come late, but I didn't, I didn't want to go with it because it came like right before, a week before what signing What school? Day. It was um, Miami. But um, USF, they told me they would offer me, but it was out of scholarship. So basically a bunch of excuses, a bunch of everything. And um, I didn't feel comfortable with the situation, so I just stuck with Purdue. Now, at the beginning of your senior year in high school, if you could have gone anywhere that you wanted to pick, what would you have picked? You know what's funny about it? I'm actually kind of glad I didn't go to any of the Florida schools because ain't no telling where I w w what would end up happening. So I feel like everything happened for a reason. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, I just hope we won more games when I was there. That's about it. I know, but that wasn't the question I asked you. If you could have gone to any <laughs> any school of the, any school you wanted as any school a high school. In the whole, sure. Um, I always love LSU. I love LSU. Okay. So I probably would have chose LSU. So you must have been there on a party weekend or something. I've never been there. I just, <laughs> oh, okay. I've never been to LSU. I just love their DBs. Like, what's funny is, growing up, I was watching LSU. I love Morris. Come, I get drafted by the Cowboys. Now I'm his teammate. It was, like, one of the craziest things ever. And why did you love him more than Peterson or the Honey Badger? 
It was just something about them. It was just something about them that year they went to the um, championship yeah. game. It was just something about them. All right, Kayvon, uh, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And where would you have gone if you could have gone anywhere you wanted? Michigan State. Closer to Grand Rapids than, I mean. Yeah, it's 45 minutes. Uh, you got to, it's 45 minutes in uh, Central Michigan is uh, an hour and 30 minutes. Because I noticed what you, when you said that Michigan State didn't offer you, yeah. and you didn't, it didn't even seem to bother you that Michigan didn't offer you. Well, I mean. If either one would have offered me, I would have picked them instead of Central probably, but neither offered me. So, you know, I'm happy I went to Central too. Um, I feel like I got to play early. A lot of people that go to Michigan and Michigan State, they don't, they just ride the bench the whole time. Like, but yeah, so I'm glad I went there. What, AB's laughing because of what, something <laughs> that you maybe almost said, but didn't, but I'm not gonna push you. Um, but, so when you went to Purdue, and you were drafted in the sixth round, then okay, we understand why maybe you got to, plus you didn't get offered. And But you grew up in Grand Rapids mm -hmm. and you went to Central Michigan. Did you feel overlooked? Did you have a little chip on your shoulder? Oh yeah, for sure I feel overlooked. Um, I felt overlooked uh, in the NFL draft too when they picked us both sixth round. We both felt like that. Um, but, you know, me coming from Grampus, Michigan, is right by Michigan State. I went to their camp, and they, that day they actually brought a bunch of Florida kids in. And they put all the Florida people on one field and the Michigan people on the other field, and all the coaches was watching the Florida people. So I was stuck with Central Michigan on one field, and, uh, you know, Michigan State and other uh, mid-major coaches was on the other field. So... You know, I guess that was, a, you know, like a blessing in disguise. And now you're a Chippewa for life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got some quarterback questions for these men, and we're going to get to know them even better as we go along. Anthony Brown and Kayvon Frazier of the Cowboys are guests tonight on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and brought to you in part by Omni Hotel. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more and turn the next away game into a getaway weekend. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys, and by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. We're right back in just a moment on the Cowboys Hour.
supported by Albertson and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. I'm Brad Sham. Jeff Cavanaugh rejoins us next week, but we are delighted to have Cowboys defensive backs Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown with us uh, this evening. Coming off their bye week, these two young men drafted in the sixth round a year ago, and they are making their place in the NFL. So let, let's, uh, let's talk some quarterbacks just for a moment because uh, Kayvon went to Central Michigan with Cooper Rush. Now, when you were practicing against Cooper Rush, did you see an NFL quarterback? Oh, yeah. Since, um, because me and him, like, we came into college together, too. And so, so when I got there, I played as a, a freshman, and he actually um, redshirted. So he was our scout quarterback. So, you know, every day we went versus him, he would, like, torch us. So, so um, from that moment, I, I knew he was going to be something special. And he went on to break every record at Central Michigan and in, like, the state of Michigan. So, yeah, we knew he was going to be an NFL quarterback. Now, when they were scouting him here and fixing to sign him as a free agent after he didn't get drafted, mm -hmm. did any of them bother to say, okay, bud, you practice against this guy every day. We, give, us the, give us the lowdown. No, I don't think nobody asked me that. What the heck? To be honest. What's the matter I with you guys? I don't think nobody asked me that, <laughs> but... You know, I got nothing but positive stuff to say about him. If the, if the scout, let's go back a year and pretend. So the scouting department says, look, we think we got a pretty good book on this guy, but you practiced against him. Information is power. Give me the book. I would have told him, like, you can't go wrong. I would have told him to pick him in the, like, earlier, you know, to be honest. Um, even on Twitter, if y'all follow me on Twitter, I posted right before the draft, like, they don't sleep on Cooper Rush. And like now, now everybody's looking back at that tweet like, yeah. He knew what he was talking about. <laughs> All right. Now, Anthony and I talked about this a little bit just before we went on the air. So this week, the Cowboys are going to San Francisco. And uh, you may have noticed that the 49ers yesterday made a quarterback change in mid-game. And they went to C.J. Beathard, who was their third pick from third round pick from Iowa. And I, I went to a Big 8 school when that conference was in existence, so I could put together that Iowa and Purdue were both in the Big 10. Gee, yeah. A.B.'s only one year older than this kid. Maybe they played each other. We did. We actually played each other two years, I want to say, out before since that I've been there. And, um, you know, they got us the last game that, like I told you earlier, they beat us. We didn't win a lot of games at Purdue. So, I mean, like I told you earlier, he's a, he's a great, great quarterback. You know, uses legs a lot, got a great arm. And he, he understands the game. You know, he's one of those hard-nosed hard -nosed guys that's going to earn it. What do you – I mean, I'm sure you haven't watched any tape of him yet, have you? Not yeah, really, no. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, today would have been your day off anyway. There, you're back on a regular schedule. But, but when you look at the tape of him, what will come to mind uh, of what you saw at Iowa? What were the things that he did that make him uh, – oh, yeah, that guy could play in the NFL. You know, he just he makes hard, he makes tough throws. This is at Iowa. He made tough throws, and um, you know, he used his feet. That was a big, a big, a big part of his game that he used. You know, if you have everybody covered, but he he might scramble around by time and make a receiver uncover for you. So I mean, he know how to make plays. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, making plays. Well, let's talk about where each of you is in in the in the defense at the moment. Uh, if if I told you uh, A B last year. At this time, a quarter of the way through your rookie season, that next year you're going to be starting at corner. Would you have been pleased, surprised, saying what's taking so long? What would you have thought? Um, I would have said we're right on pace. That's what I would have said. And um, you know, it's everybody got a, a, a place they're trying to get. And you know, I'm, I feel like I'm right on pace where I'm trying to go. And um, I'm just trying to keep pushing forward every day as I go. Now we're going to talk a little bit later about the things that you might be wanting to work on to get better and the things you think you're good at. I want to come back to Kayvon for a minute because last week, uh, I'm sure that irritated you. They, they got they got into a numbers crunch and uh, they had to have all the offensive linemen up and, uh, and they had other injuries and so you didn't dress for the game. And, and I know a couple of members of the coaching staff who said, the guy's like our best special teams player. I don't know what we're doing, but... Um, 
I don't think that's going to happen very many more times. But I, how hard was it? Because you you you've had a great camp. You're a demonstrably improved player from your rookie year. Mm -hmm. You can see the growth. How how did you handle that? How disappointing uh, was it? It was definitely disappointing. Definitely uh, tough to sit there and watch. But you know, I I trust the process and I trust what they're doing. So you know, I understand that that it was a numbers game. So. Uh, there was nothing that I can do but move on. Did, did you? I've known guys who came to this level and uh, did not understand the whole inactive process. Cowboys had a wide receiver once. I won't say his name because I don't want to embarrass him because I really liked him. A uh, young man from, from this part of the country. And uh, he didn't know anything about being inactive. And when they told him one game uh, in his rookie year he was going to be inactive, he thought he'd been cut. They said, no, 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 you're <laughs> still got a job. You're just <laughs> not playing this week does it does it feel personal even though they say you understand Kayvon this is just the numbers it's the injuries this week did you understand that or did you well I mean I take everything kind of personal that's that's how I am in this position right now I feel so I mean all I can do is go back to the drawing book and get better so what what did what position did you play in high school and college so high school, I played running back and linebacker my senior year. And in college, I played uh, safety. All safety. Because mm -hmm. what I hear is, you know what we see? We see a guy who is such a good athlete uh, and and has size. And you're bigger than you were last year, right? A little stronger, a little thicker? Yeah, a little bigger, yep. Okay. So that I think what I hear is, you know, we see a guy who can be a safety and a a smaller linebacker like in a dime package can play linebacker plus an exceptional special teams player now I'm gonna ask him in a minute I know what he's gonna say but I mean do you does that does that sound um, welcoming to you or or to you are you either a starting safety or they don't like you yeah I mean that sounds that sounds pretty welcoming um, you know uh, I think wherever they put me at, I can uh, make a difference. So, you know, if it is just the dime linebacker or whatever it is, you know, I think I can go in there and make a big difference. So, you know, it's just it's, it's just all about timing and patience right now. So last year, Anthony Brown comes into the NFL, had never played slot, right? No, never. And here he is, thrown in there in camp preseason, looking great. He's a tackling machine. Yeah, look at this. We got a guy who can play in the slot that we didn't know we had. And all you would say is, I, I, I'm a corner. Don't put me in any slot. I'm a corner. Did that Was that more slot chip is, fuel? Slot is corner. That's the, that's the part people don't understand. That's the same thing. It's just inside. It's, it's the same. It's just a slot that you play inside. You got more space. That's it. So it does take a different skill set than playing outside, though, doesn't it? Or does it not, in your opinion? Oh, um, not physically, probably mentally, just understanding more route comps, like what you could get from the slot. Okay, so other than size, as a corner, what's the difference between playing Cole Beasley and, I won't even say Dez, because he's physically, so let's say Terrence Williams. What's the I difference between can. playing Cole and T-Duck? Um, well, Cole is Cole, right? It's hard, you know. He's he's a quick guy in the slot. He got so, like I said, so much space in there, and he got very quick feet. So that might be one thing. You you got to have quick feet to play in the slot. Outside with Terrence, he's quick. He's quick too, just like um, B. He's probably not as quick foot foot wise, but he's quick also. And there's not as much room out on the outside to work with. So you could probably cover him more easier than trying to stay sticky to B's all day. So it seems to me now that you and Orlando. And now Jordan Lewis, all three show the ability to play inside and out. Talk to us a little bit about what that does about the versatility of the that corner. That's big for our defense. You know, we a couple games this year and a couple games last year, we was down to three corners. That's it. And um, we're, we're having so many versatile people, even with Byron, even with Xavier. We got guys that could play safety, play inside, guys that could play corner, play inside. So if somebody was to go down, we could always just move our pieces around and still be effective on the field. And you mentioned Xavier. Xavier Woods, I think he's caught everybody's attention with his ability. In Denver, yep. the first opportunity, everybody's gone down. Just jump in there in that slot. You've been nothing but a safety all your life. Now, what if they put you in the slot? 
Yeah, I don't think I can play it as good as <laughs> <laughs> as good as those guys. Like you know, Xavier, he he got really good uh, covering skills and man-to-man -man skills, and all the other guys that play slot. It's a whole different world at slot, like like playing the slot receivers. You know, I think it is. I think it's it's because our defense is so simple. Like it's it's not much to that you could have to learn so fast. You we could throw somebody in. It's, it's basically simple things you could do. And if you got the ability, you you would be able to succeed in our defense. But there are certain skills like like yep. is is it not unusual? Both of you answer this for a guy like Xavier, who as far as I know, never played corner. He's been a, he was a safety at Louisiana Tech. I know the whole time. Well, well, actually, when he told me, he said he played everything there. So at La Tech, he did. Yeah, and then the first day of camp, when I I saw him, like, we was just doing one-on-ones and stuff, and I saw him doing one-on-ones. I was like, bro, you can you can play nickel, too. You can play nickel a little bit. And he was like, yeah, I played it before. So, I mean, I knew he could play it just from watching him play one-on-ones on, on tight ends who the safety play. So, you know, he's really good at man-to-man. -man. Okay, I mean, it's pretty clear, especially as Jordan and Xavier and Cheeto get their – hamstrings all straightened out bless their hearts and AB's not going to say anything because he had his own time with that but yeah. I mean it's clear that as the season goes along you, the depth that you guys have in the secondary is just going to keep getting better and better but we, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, about the scheme the defensive scheme how that all fits in but we also want to get off the field again and talk about what you guys like to do what to forget about it to get away from the field and other sports People like to know what other sports you played. I'm just giving you a little taste so you can get your answers ready. Okay. Make up some lies if you want to. You <laughs> give, give you a little time. We're delighted to have Anthony Brown and Kayvon Frazier with us tonight on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertsons, we're at the Omni Frisco, and we're brought to you in part by Jack Black Skin Care. Say goodbye to painful razor burn and bumps when you upgrade your shave with Jack Black's pain-free shave system. Now... $10 off your order of $50 or more when you visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. And by Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries at Albertsons and Tom Thumb every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey and enter for a chance to win tickets to the next Cowboys home game. Courtesy of Albertsons, the official supermarket of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the Cowboys Hour on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network with Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown. We'll be right back.
Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back. I'm Brad Sham with our special guests, Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown. Jeff Cavanaugh will be back with us next Monday night on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons, our regular Monday night stop right here at the Omni Frisco. I'm going to help Kayvon out just for a minute because he's been so accommodating and signing everything for the fans that he's not had a chance to. Uh, we're going to tell you right now, did, did you get the message to her or have you decided what you wanted? What you wanted to order to take home? Yeah, I want the uh, steak, the steak for it. Okay, great. Okay, we got to get the man fed for crying out loud. That's the least we can do. I told you I got your back. <laughs> right. Appreciate that. Um, one of the things that um, I really admire about um, professional athletes is the tendency they have to give back uh, to try to make the community better. Um, and they do it really for reasons of just wanting to make the community better, not because they want publicity, not because they're trying to be self-aggrandizing. But when we get an opportunity to talk about some things that guys do, I, I think that fans are interested in it, and I think it's worthwhile. And Kayvon's got, and I've seen some stuff on social media. You and Tyrone Crawford have been going back and forth a little bit with challenges on things, yeah, right? Taj did his uh, when we played Denver. He did his that game, and now me and Keith Smith is actually doing a charity uh, a charity war right now. You're a charity so, war. Now you've got a you yeah. got a foundation. Yeah, I do have a foundation, and it's Fraser Cares. Yep. So tell us about Fraser Cares. Well, Fraser Cares is a uh, foundation that I founded that benefit it benefits children who really don't have a father figure in their life and uh, children who's basically like in need um like the less unfortunate children um me growing up i was really less than fortunate my mom had multiple cirrhosis my dad left us when when i was two so so that really motivated me to uh, do something and try to make a difference in these kids lives and you know we do a lot of stuff like every monday i go read the kids um at, at the elementary schools in dallas um how do you pick the schools I mean, people are now going to hear this and say, wait, I want Kayvon Frazier to come to my school and read. How do you know. pick the school? My publicists pick the schools. And okay. I just, yeah, and I just How go. do they get a hold of them? Um, FraserCares uh, at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Yep. Very good. Now, I saw on uh, Joe Trahan showed me on, uh, I think it was Instagram, you've got something coming up on the 20th. Uh, yep. Trick, trick, what is it? Trick or treat. Well, there's actually two things coming up on the 20th. Uh, which is this Friday. Um, the first thing we're taking six cancer survivors. Uh, they had, they, uh, they sent a request in by Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday or tomorrow, uh, to FraserCares.com and tell us their cancer story. If they're going through cancer right now or if they survived cancer, uh, breast cancer, uh, because it's Breast Cancer and Awareness Month. So um, my girlfriend actually is running this event and. She's taking six cancer survivors to the um, for like a spa day, um, a whole big spa day, and, and then the other event later in that night is trick or treat, or trunk or treat. That's it. Tr yeah, trick trunk, or trunk. Uh, yeah, trick or trunk. Right. So it's like a safe. It's basically a safe, a safer way for kids to trick or treat, and like there's some fun things that's going on. Like there will be giveaways and um, contests. Who decorate their trunk the best, their car the best. How old were you, Kayvon, when you were motivated to, when you had more than thoughts about, I got, I got to make sure that people don't go through this. At some point, that thought became action and you crystallized it. How, how old were you? What, what pushed you to that point? Well, it was, it was in seventh grade uh, when my mom lost her job and my dad was nowhere to be found. And... Uh, they were actually going to kick us out to Christian schools because my mom couldn't keep paying until like one family, uh, one family came in and and uh, basically gave us g gave me and my sister a full ride scholarship from middle school through high school. So just so we could stay in the Christian school. So so when they just did that, like you know, that definitely motivated me and and that's that's what's giving me the motivation to give back right now. 
Uh, you got anything you want to plug, A.B.? Yeah, you can applaud that. Yada, yada. Young yeah, man spending a lot of time and energy trying to make the world a little bit better. I don't have a foundation to thank at the moment. I'm still in the process of getting my feet wet and getting everything down to that's, my liking. He, he just made both of us look bad, so exactly. that's, that's okay. <laughs> but, but he deserves a little attention for, for what he's doing for that, and, uh, and that's good. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, you, we've established that you're both football fans. Uh, but what other sports, A.B., what sports did you play? Did you see yourself as a football player as a kid, or did you think you might be an NBA um, star? Or I, It was funny. I never played basketball in a day in my life. Never. Really? Never. Um, I was a baseball and, and football guy. What position in baseball? Every position. I, center field was one of my main. Center and um, shortstop was my main two positions. And um, I played football, like I said. Athletes, they played everywhere, and I ran track in high school. Could you hit? Yeah, I was like a lead off. I was the lead off guy because I was always so fast. So you know, base stealer. Yeah, every time. And now uh, the Yankees train in Tampa. Were you a Yankee fan or a Rays fan, mm-hmm. or neither one? I was more. I was more of a Yankees fan um, growing up when Derek Jeter and those guys was there in their prime. And um, you know, I just I watch baseball all the time. Like I watch the game tonight when they play Houston. So you know, it'd be interesting to see. Do you do you have? I'm also a big baseball fan. I, I'm a Cubs fan, bless my heart. But <laughs> they uh, almost won. Yeah. Now, like you know, hey, three years in a row in the championship series. That's that's pretty good. But as people, especially down in this part of the country, they say it's so slow. The sport's so slow, and then you just have to try to explain to them the beauty of baseball. And right. But what for? What is the attraction for you? I just love the whole atmosphere about baseball. You know. Um, just like the cold weather, October, the home runs, everything about it, man. The, the energy, the crowd is so quiet. This is what I like about it. It's so quiet. As soon as the ball hit, the whole crowd erupts. What different from football was always loud, and it's, so it don't seem as loud like when they erupt. So that's what I love about baseball. You know, I love the dugout. Like literally, you have chance. Like G O O D E Y E, good. I, I love, I love all that, man. I love it all. <laughs> Wait, give us that one more time. <laughs> I can't do it. No, yeah, yeah, okay. You can, but that's all right. Uh, you can get that going on the bench. Did you think at one time you'd be a big league ball player? Yeah, I mean, it was it was one or the other. I was going to go for it for one or the other. And um, my dad always told me I should have stayed in baseball because that's where the money is. But, <laughs> I mean, the NFL need corners, so, I mean, it's, it's a different route. What pushed you to football? Scholarship. Scholarship to Purdue. Makes a big difference. All right, what yeah. about you? What else did you play? Uh, I was a big basketball guy all growing up, so I liked basketball, and I played track in high school, but that was just to stay in shape. And did you uh, think that you would pursue basketball? What what got you? Yeah, I I was actually going to quit football my freshman year to just focus on basketball, and then... Freshman year at Central? No, freshman year at high school. High school, okay. Yeah, and then my uh, first football coach ever told me to don't do that. (laughs) <laughs> well, yes, yes, of course the football coach yep. is going to tell you don't do that. Yeah. And so what, But what was persuasive about his argument? Well, he was just like, yo, ticket out of Grand Rapids is football. So um, I wasn't going to listen to him. But and then, uh, you know, he was my best friend. Uh, he was my best friend father, and then he passed away shortly after that. So then after that, then I was like, okay, let me just stay in football. Well, then you had to listen to him then. Yeah, so... It's like his dying wish. Yeah, so I stayed in football and look where I am now. Look, I always thought I was a basketball player. Uh, look, look where you are now, both of you in the NFL. Let's talk a little bit about the growth each of you has enjoyed as a player and what you look forward to. A.B., um, you got questions from all of us in the media last year about what a ter- terrific tackler you have always been. I guess people don't expect a cornerback to be a good tackler. You and Jordan are making... That look crazy in Orlando, thing. right? Is it's it is thing. it a Big Ten thing? It's a Big Ten thing. Big Ten corners tackle. Um, what do you think you are m- most improved at from a year ago? Just being prepared to play every down more than just coming in a nickel and just getting like more of the third down reps. Like being to play first down, second down, understanding more splits and formations and um, route concepts. So you're talking about the mental approach yeah, and mental, experience. Mental. Yeah, and were, were you always a student of the game? 
Uh, I wasn't. I wouldn't say always, but it's, it's been getting better year in and year out to, to my liking, and um, you know, I'm sticking with it. Uh, my guess is I'm going to try to say some good things about Skandrick behind his back here, so that we can use it against him when he comes here later on. I, I'll bet he has helped you with that, with just knowing how smart Orlando is about the right. game. I'll bet he's really helped you see it and understand it better. Am I right? Yeah, most definitely. You know, he's been in the league 10 years, so, you know, he's seen a lot of ball, seen a lot of plays, you know, so we could be in a, we could be in the film room and he might be like, hey, B, I got a play for you right here, so you might see this, so and this this come up, this your opportunity. So he give me plays like that, and I look for it, and it'll make everybody better because he might get it on his side too. So Now, uh, as you watch yourself on tape, what do you look at and say, man, I got to be better at that? It's just our communication in the back end, man. We we had a lot of plays last week against Green Bay and um, a couple of weeks before where our communication wasn't where it, where it should be at. And uh, trust our fundamentals. So we just got to get back to our normal, setting the edges, you know, um, stand on top of the defense. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break, Kayvon, and then we're coming back and talk about your, your improvement has been almost measurable, and you were good last year as a rookie, but you, you just, like, gone to big boy status here this this year and ready to step in and take your place and um, and then we're going to uh, have a microphone passing amongst all of you so you can ask uh, questions of Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown on tonight's Miller Lite Cowboys Hour supported by Albertsons and uh, brought to you in part by Albertsons and Tom Thumb where you get 10% off your groceries and uh, that's every Dallas Cowboys game day at Albertsons and Tom Thumb when you wear your Cowboys jersey and enter for a chance to win tickets to the next Cowboys home game, courtesy of Albertsons, the official supermarket of the Dallas Cowboys, and by Jack Black Skin Care. Say goodbye to painful razor burn and bumps when you upgrade your shave with Jack Black's pain-free shave system. Now $10 off your order of $50 or more when you visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. Right back with A.B. and Kayvon Frazier on the Cowboys Hour after this.
Robertson and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And the Cowboys Hour brought to you in part by Omni Hotel. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more and turn the next away game into a getaway weekend. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys, and by Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. We are with uh, Kayvon Frazier and Anthony Brown of the Cowboys. We're going to. Stephen's got a microphone in the audience here at the uh, Omni Frisco, and we'll be going to those questions in just a moment. But I want to give Kayvon a chance to talk about what Anthony just told us about how the things that he's studied, the things he thinks he's better at from his rookie year, the things he still wants to improve. Uh, so, Kayvon, let's do the same thing. What, when you came into camp, what were the things throughout the offseason you said, okay, I'm going to make a list. Here's the things I'm going to be better at. What do you think you're better at than you were as a rookie? Um, I'm definitely think I'm, I definitely think I'm faster. I'm faster in, uh, and my feet quickness got uh, better. Um, last year I had um, a stretch fracture in my foot that nobody really knew about, but I knew about it. You know, it was in the back of my head. Well, when did that happen? They found out at the combine, and the Cowboys still drafted me. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad, so I didn't get anything done to it. Um, so I played through it all last year, but it was still on the back of my mind. With a broken foot. It was it was just a stress a stress fracture. Yeah, it was just a stress fracture. You yeah. know why it was just a stress fracture? Because it was on your foot, not my foot. <laughs> That's why it was just a stress fracture. So I mean I mean I played through it all last year, but it was still in the back of my head and you know that took away from other preparation that, you know, I needed it to do because that was in the back of my head instead of like worrying about the game. You know, I was worrying about like not to step on it wrong, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So like, yes. It, it, because I knew any, any like false step, it could break. You know, they even told me that that any false step it could break. Who, but, who, who's they? Like the doctors, and not the doctors here. No, 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 no. And when I after the combine, I got like second opinions, and it was like. Hey, B, did you, you know, know about all this? Like, I didn't know about it until yeah. we got to Dallas together. Yeah, so they was like, it could break, but you know, there's a chance that it's not gonna break. And it didn't break, but then after the season, I you got your <laughs> mind now. Come on. <laughs> it didn't break, but after the season, you know, I, I got I went and got a screw put in it, and then, um, you know, from from that point on, I was just focusing on quick, or making my feet quicker, and you know, just getting faster in general, and uh, being able to play man to man more. So those uh, those were the things that I focused on, you know, in the off season, and that, you know, I definitely got better at. When you watch yourself now on tape do you what besides quickness you're not thinking about your foot anymore i take it no no, no i'm okay. not thinking about that at all all right uh what else do you see that okay i'm i couldn't do that last year i didn't know how to do that last year well just uh you know man to man in general uh you know when i do one-on-ones now you know one-on-ones you you're not going to win every rep so i might not win every rep but i'm a lot more like I close the space faster, um, you know I can, I can guard a lot more people now than I did last year, you know because at Central Michigan we barely play any man to man. We was all cover four, so, and in, and in high school I was all you know running back and linebacker. So I never played man to man until I got here. And now, and now um, you know I'm improving at it, and I was I'm definitely it's definitely a dramatic improvement from this year to last year. And when you watch that tape of yourself now. What things do you look at and say, Kayvon, you got to be better at that? That's one thing, too. Men, and men to men in general, um, I definitely see an improvement, but I definitely got to get better. Um, and then, you know, other than that, um, just learning how to play every down. Um, you know, I, or, or learning how to be an every down safety. You know, since I've been here, I was like a reserve safety and a, a special teams player. So um, I just got to learn how to be every down safety so when that times come and when that time come up i'll be ready for it steven we're going to go out to the audience in one second for those questions but i want to hear each of them talk about playing special teams because it's a critically important part of the game and uh and you play different roles on it ab did you play a lot of teams at purdue yeah i played at purdue i played special teams all four years at purdue um played on the punt team played on the punt return team and kickoff and you're Same thing, you, you know. 
from time to time, you're one of the gunners now, flyers yeah. we call them. I right? get out there if, if Coach Versace let me, you know, he, he'd be kind of stingy with the reps out there. By the way, while we're on the subject of that, Demontre Moore it's crazy, it? is a gunner. <laughs> y'all, I know y'all don't really pay much attention to the punt team. Next time the Cowboys punt, just look, find, I don't want you to not watch A.B., but It'll be k -Von. It'll be him and k out there. He's twice as big as you. How, yeah. how can a man that size be a gunner? I mean, he's just strong. He throw everybody out of the way. And got some speed for his size. I mean, he got some speed in general, but he's abnormally fast for his size. And do you like playing that position? Oh, yeah, I love playing gunner. But you get abused, though, don't you? Nah. nah. It's a it's mindset. Cool. Say more. It's a mindset, so. You got two guys, if you ever watch tape of the gunners, you got two guys banging you and pushing you and knocking you down, trying to not, throw you out of bounds. It's not always a double sometimes, yeah. so. I mean, a double, it, it might be a double, but they might not even put their hands on you because they put you out of bounds, so you're running down the field half the time untouched, and um, you got to make that tackle. There's a little glint in your eye. You like playing it, don't you? That's cool. I like, I love football. It ain't just <laughs> about special teams, defense. I love it all, so it's whatever. And what, I mean, do you like playing that position? Oh, yeah, I love it. You know, that's that's what I do. Yeah, I love what playing, I play in that position. And when you double, like, it's not always a double. Like, you you, you got to attack one of them, and then that's how you. So you don't treat it like a double, even though it's a double team. But you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't just always watch the ball. There's a whole world of stuff to watch out there when these guys are playing. All right, let's get some questions from our audience here at the uh, Omni. Okay, we have Sarah here with a question. Okay, this is for both of you. Um, what is your favorite home-cooked meal? Oh, nice. Mm. You both cook My favorite home-cooked meal is bacon. Bacon and eggs. You're a man <laughs> of simple <laughs> tastes. I mean, the day before every game, I mean, no, when I, because before the games, we got like a little time to go home, so I always go to Albertsons and, uh, Oh, see? You no, know, really, really. It's right, it's right by my house. So I always stop at Albertsons, get some bacon, and she'll have the egg cooked. So when I get home, I just got to give her the bacon, and she'll cook the bacon. How about that? And he goes to Albertsons, Carol. What about, what about um, you, Amy? I What'd probably you? have to go with spaghetti um, with some garlic bread. But I love, I love sausage in my spaghetti, so I want ground beef and sausage. Are you particular about the kind of sausage? Um... It, they don't have the sausage here in Texas. Back in Florida, it's the Uncle John sausage. I don't know if they, they don't have it here, so I usually use um, we use brats here just to throw it, give it a little spicy taste. Just a little tang. Get a little tang to it, but that'll be my meal. Okay. We have Sharma here with a question. Okay, Kayvon, with your upcoming trunk or treat, I want to ask you and Anthony, what are y'all going to be for Halloween? Mm. Nice. <laughs> Dang, you putting us on the spot here. For Halloween, um, I'll probably dress up like a boxer. Everybody say I look like Tommy Hearns. A little bit. There's a, you can see, you, you see the resemblance. Yeah, so you? since everybody say that, I'll probably dress up like a boxer and, and go out there like him and go out there swinging. Um, Glo gloves and big satin shorts? Yep. Okay. A robe, maybe a big, a big satin robe, hit man on the back? Yep, hit man on the back. Okay. I don't know. I probably, I would, I probably would, wouldn't have dressed up, but now since I have a son, I would have to dress up. And uh, I don't know what I would be. Uh, I don't know. Now, what are you going to put that poor little guy? He has he has no, I just like being at Disney World. You're going to put some, or your girl is going to put some kind of a tuxedo a, uh, or a space suit or I some think damn gonna thing have, on. We're going to dress him as Buzz Lightyear this year. We're going to dress him as Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. And he is going to look at that someday and say, what did you do to me? <laughs> what were you thinking? It would be funny. It would be fun to talk about. What was your favorite? We, what have we got? About a minute left here. What, what was your favorite costume if you had one as a kid? Uh, I was a blue Power Ranger. A blue Power Ranger. Yeah. Okay. And you? Uh, I was Lion King. I was Simba. Of course you were. Yep. All right. Uh, each of you give me about 20 seconds on what you expect from your team here coming forward well, I expect I expect hard nose football you know we get back to Cowboys football run the ball play sound defense and we're gonna get back on track 
Yeah, we're going back to work, you know. We, we, we definitely going back to work, and I mean, y'all gonna see it this game. Uh, we gonna get y'all all we got. All right. Two of the reasons this future is bright for this uh, defense. Kayvon Frazier, Anthony Brown, thank you guys. Great hour, really appreciate having you with us. Uh, Jeff Cavanaugh rejoins us next week after he comes back from his lovely Maine vacation. We can ask him all about the lobsters that he ate. And uh, we'll be back with you next week right here at the Omni Frisco on the Cowboys Hour on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.